on vacation. I promise you, I'm here to preach. Look at that. I'm not on vacation, I promise you. I'm only here to preach. Vermont, Florida. But these amazing people that I'm here to preach for made sure I was at an amazing hotel with an amazing view to enjoy this amazing day. And I don't have my glasses, so I can't see to speak to people. Morning, hi, good evening, good afternoon, where are we? Good morning, California, good afternoon, East Coast. I love you, I love you, love you. I gotta see, hi, say, say Chicago, love you. Greetings from South Bend. I really, that would be such an old school to go back to South Bend. What's up, family? How you doing, Atlanta? Woo, love you, good to see you. I've got people that, I'm, I'm scoping all, all, all around them. I've got people around me, but it's okay. Uh, yes, hey, what's up? It's beautiful, right? Look at that, look at that. I, I know, I love my job, thank you, Jesus. So tonight, everyone, meet me, Florida, Georgia, get down here. If you can get off work early, you can make the run. Come meet me here in Orman, Florida, uh, with the amazing family members of the Raleigh's at Calvary Christian Center tonight. It is going to be a phenomenal move of God. I intentionally wanted to get rest today because uh, this woman of God, who she is, uh, Dawn Raley, and the amazing women of God of her church, they've already been praying up and seeking the Lord for a move. And guess what? I'm coming to get one too. So you got to know that I'm a junkie for his presence too. So I want the Lord to have his way. Um, thank God for you. Thank God for what God is doing. But I want to urge you to get here tonight if you can. If you're anywhere in the Florida realm that you can get here, get here tonight to all of our e-members in Florida. I need you to come stop by our table. Make sure I see you. I can hug you. I know who you are. We love you so much. Uh, my husband's t telling me all the time, honey, stop rushing. People be talking to you and you don't talk back. My husband is here. Thank God for his covering. Um, but anyway, we're going to be here tonight. Uh, I ministered a little bit on the last scope, but I, I found out that it didn't go through. And I want us to understand uh, the body of Christ and where we are. Praise God. Who's that from? I can't read that. I'm sorry. I really can't. Hey, from, yeah, I need to take my glass away, man. Hold on. Okay, now the shade is coming. I, I can't read anything. I want to talk a minute about the temple uh, that the Spirit of the Lord and that the body of Christ is in. The story of Zacchaeus, and some of you may be familiar with it, and I tried to share it on my last school, but I didn't, I didn't know it didn't come through. Zacchaeus, the Bible said that Zacchaeus was so desperate to get to Jesus, but he could not because he was short of stature. So Zacchaeus had some things that hindered him amongst the mob of people that were also trying to get to Jesus. But Zacchaeus was so desperate to get to Jesus that he climbed up into a sycamore tree. And the Bible said that when Jesus was to pass that way, he looked up and he saw Zacchaeus and he said, Zacchaeus, he said, come on down, man of God. He said, because this day I must abide at your house. There's a press in the anointing that I know that there's a press of people, but let me put it this way. There's a press beyond the press of desperate people trying to get to Jesus that realize they have shortcomings, that realize they've got struggles. Being a short, short of stature could be something that he suffered with all of his life. He was rich, he had money, but yet he had shortcomings. We ought to get out of the day and the mentality that only poor people and struggling people need Jesus. Everybody, hello, Shando Baha. Everybody needs Jesus. And at some point, you reach a state in your life that you realize money cannot buy what I need. Fame cannot buy what I need. I've tried things and nothing can help me but Jesus. Being short of stature is something that he was born with. You can't change that. But he didn't let it change his ability to get to Jesus. So because he was short, as our Michelle Obama would say, he didn't stay low. He went high. He went into a sycamore tree. And the Bible says that when Jesus saw him Jesus said come down for I must abide at your house there are certain things that you're gonna have to do to get your breakthrough there are certain desperations that you're gonna have to get into and press to get your own breakthrough let me break it down to you everybody is going through something everybody is tackling something in their home in their finances on their job in their bodies mentally physically emotionally and you are gonna have to do what you need to do Hello, Shandobasi. 
to get your own breakthrough, baby. You've got to do it. You've got to climb as far as you need to climb. You need to hit your ride, whatever you need to do to get your breakthrough because Jesus sees your press. Your press is not to get to a man, but your press is to get to Jesus. And when you know and God knows you have done your best to get to him, it causes faith to meet. It's a synergy, baby. When you decide to go as high as you can, then Jesus decides to come as far as he needs to to reach you. That's what's happening in the anointing. Now, here's the part I want to talk about. That when Jesus told Zacchaeus to come down and said, today I must abide at your house, he meant that spiritually and literally. Zacchaeus then, he and Jesus walks away from the crowd. They're on their way to Zacchaeus' house. And the Bible said, that the people begin to murmur and complain and say, I can't believe Jesus is going to the house of a sinner. But you know what people didn't calculate? That as soon as Jesus told Zacchaeus to come down, Jesus was, Zacchaeus was converted. Zacchaeus' heart, hey, Shandobasi, had already turned to God. And while people were complaining that Jesus was going to the, 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 the house of a sinner, what they didn't calculate is just that fast, this man had been transformed. That's the quickening power of the Holy Spirit of what's happening in this end time. Let me talk to you, my brother. Let me talk real to you, my sister. You don't let people dictate your deliverance and how long it's going to take for you to come through a thing, how long it's going to take for you to get your breakthrough. Your communication, your desperation, your determination is between you and talking to Jesus. And when Jesus says, I'm going to come in your house, I'm talking literal, I'm talking into your temple. When Jesus says it, everything leaves. Zacchaeus immediately repented to Jesus and said, listen, I've been a crook. And I've crooked people. He said, but for everything I've done wrong, I'm giving it back to everybody sevenfold. Because when Jesus comes in your heart, he brings the change. Jesus brings the repentance. Jesus brings the ability for you to make things right. Jesus anoints you to make crooked paths straight. Don't you worry about people. When you allow Jesus to come seriously in your heart, he begins to open up doors. And when God opened the door, can't no man shut it. Meet me here tonight. We're talking breakthroughs. We're talking coming through to destinies. We're talking breaking generational curses. We're talking about getting online with the love of Jesus Christ and the destiny and purpose he has has on your life. He never meant for you to be in struggles. He never meant for you to not have a happy life. He never meant for you not to feel love and to be lonely and wrestle with demons of depression and torment. That is not the will of God for your life. The devil is a liar. He said, but I came, only me. I, I'm the only one that can give you life and life more abundantly. I love you, my brothers. I love you, my sisters. I hope to see you tonight in Ormond, Florida at Calvary Christian Center. Please be here with the rallies. Check out our website, www.tipministries.com. We are looking for God to get a breakthrough. Let me tell you what, what mind is set. Pastor Bender is in right now. Right now, I'm about the harvest. I'm about the harvest, period. And I'm about connecting those that understand the connection is with Jesus. And with Jesus, we can do all things. So I love you. I'm trying to read, but like I said, I ain't got my glasses on. I can't read and see. Maybe I need to turn this way. The sun is not. Oh, it's just such a beautiful day. Oh, what? Okay, now I got this beautiful hotel behind me. Everywhere I turn, it's just beautiful. Yes, so be encouraged, my brother. Be encouraged, my sister. Even if you can't, we are going to scope that service tonight. So if you can't be here, wherever you are, if you can tap into the service, tap into the service. Pray for Pastor Ben and pray for my body, my strength, my mind. I want the Lord to have his way. I, I, I'm determined to be a yielded vessel for him to use in whatever way he pleases. Okay, I love you, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for you. I'm really trying to read it. I'm really trying, honey. I'm trying to read. All right. Made this a help. All right. Hey, you praying for us? Okay, praise God for you. Thank you for praying for us. We love you. 48 hours is coming up, November 5th and 6th. Please be there if you can. Uh, again, I'm looking for another phenomenal move. Some of you have been asking, what is my time slot? I have no idea, but we're going to meet Jesus. So if you go to meet Jesus, he's going to meet you, just like he met Zacchaeus. Okay, we love you, my brother, my sister. We're going to check out. Uh, love you, Saginaw. Hey, what's up? Love you, Saginaw, Michigan. I hope you're encouraged. I love you, Pastor Coleman. Hope you're doing well. All right, check out the website again. Meet us there. Love you, Dallas, Texas. 
thank God for you. Blessings to you. Bless you, my brothers and my sisters. We are one in the body of Christ, and let nothing separate that. Atlanta, I love you. Thank God for you. North Carolina, which will be there December 3rd and 4th. Check it out. We're going to be in North Carolina with my dear sister, First Lady Lockett. Looking forward to that. We love you. May you go with God. Baltimore, I'm, I'm coming. Y'all know Baltimore, my old stumble ground. If you didn't, I got to go to Baltimore and tell the story. PFC, we love you. New York, thank God for you. All right, my brothers and sisters, we're going to check out. I'm just trying to say hi to some folk. I will be in South Bend, Lord's Will, or in those surrounding areas. we got to make that happen. I love you, my brothers and sisters. And I'm going to flip Michigan. What's up? You know Michigan. Oh, some ground of family. Mississippi, we love you so much. Again, lift up prayers for Pastor Fairley. We love you, man of God. Remain strong and in the power of his might. Thank God for Chicago, my dear brother, Pastor Hannah. Birmingham, Alabama, praise God for you. South Carolina, Sacramento, and the crowd goes wild. Yeah! <laughs> we about to tick, tick, boom, Sacramento. That's what we get ready to do. We get ready to let the devil know in Sacramento. You ain't about to bring no violence up in there. We praying for Sacramento, Connecticut. I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Milwaukee, that's my sis. The Carter family, what's up? Thank God for you. Tampa, Florida, you ain't that far, are you? I don't know. But anyway, you should get here tonight. Charlotte, we love you. Okay, praying for you, my brothers and sisters. We're going to go back up to our room, try to shut ourselves down for service tonight. Pray much for us. Mwah! As we pray for you. I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Detroit. Detroit, I want to do a prayer service in Detroit. So y'all pray on that, Detroit. See how the Lord can move on that. God bless you, Canada. Thank God for you. All right, we're going to go. We're going to go. Mwah, 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 mwah. Love you. Thank God for you. Don't forget, tonight, tonight, from Mom, Florida.